I'll talk about some of the stuff that you have in your kit to start with. Um, you'll have your should be blank, a hoop with your fabric and a pattern on the back of it. Um, I started working on the back stitch during my in-person class. And we'll actually start with doing the inside first. That way, if the back stitch takes a while, you can continue that at your own leisure. You'll have a needle. And if you need to tighten anything, if it seems a little loose, you can just pull the fabric. And you can also tighten this up here, this little twist. And then you do have inverter floss of various colors. I chose 15 colors just randomly. And then there's also black. For the black, we'll use the whole strand. And for the inside details, we'll use only two of the strands. Something you might want is a hot glue gun, and that would be later. You'll also definitely want scissors so you can trim. Now the hot glue gun is for when you're done. If you want to, you can take and trim this around and glue to hold it in place. Or you can choose to display it in something other than the hoop. You could put it in a frame or even sew it onto something. So to get us started, I'm going to show how to pull your strand. These are made up of six strands and you can just kind of spread them out a little bit. And one at a time, grab one strand and pull it. So there we've got one. And then I'm going to pull a second one. If you're having trouble threading your needle like I am, you can always trim it. Cutting it at a 45 degree angle helps. So I'm just going to get my first one ready. You can pick whatever color you want. And then I'm actually going to tie a knot on the end because you guys wouldn't have this to work into like I do. And I'll also show how to kind of stitch your work into place without having to tie a knot. So here I've got my knot. And the first stitch that I did was a running stitch and that's probably the easiest one we have of all of these. So we'll start with a running stitch. You'll start from the back and we can just work somewhere within the Ohio. If you wanna put your running stitch here, you can, or if you wanna put it here, you can really put these in any order you want. And if you decide there's one that you don't wanna to add to it, you can always look up online different stitches or we've got some embroidery books here in the library and I've got them on display. Um, you can check those out and pick a stitch that you like better. So I'm just going to stick my needle into the fabric and pull it through and see my knot wasn't big enough. So I can knot over it again, or I can do that stitching it in place. So now that I have my thread ready to go, a running stitch is just done by weaving your needle in and up out of the fabric back and forth. And you'll want to try to get them about the same size each time. You could try counting the little holes, but that might be a little difficult. And then you just pull it.
and if you have experience with sewing, you may have used a running stitch before to just kind of quickly put things together. And then I'm close to this top edge of my pattern, so I'll just kind of get an idea of where it's at and then stop right there. So it's not the straightest, but it it works and everything doesn't have to be perfect, especially if this is your first time doing any embroidery. Um, and you're allowed to be creative with it as well. If you really want to get things straight, you can always use there's pencils or there's markers that you can use a straight edge to mark things out that then erase. But for this, it kind of it gives it a homemade charm if it's not completely straight. So then we'll do a tie off. And you can go back to where you last stitched and just kind of wrap it around. If you had your border done already, like I have here, you could also mark off into that. So there, I've made a knot, and then I can just trim it. So the next one is stem stitch, and it's very similar to the back stitch that you'll do on the outside of it. And I do have some of the stitches pictured on your piece of paper to just give you some visual references. And I'm going to show how to kind of lock your stitch in place. So I'm going to hold on to the tail here. And my first stitch is just kind of like a regular stitch. So I can do that. And watch on this side. I'll get my tail, make sure. And this is just like if you've done cross stitch, make sure that's tucked in. And stem stitch is basically, you just go slightly off to the side of your stitch. So then it's kind of a slanted line. And then you'll go back in to it like that. And I'm always lining it up with that previous stitch. Oh, and I put that one a little too far over. So if you want to undo one, you can always take your needle out and pull it out. And then try again. And this stitch is used often in embroidery to create lines that are a little more filled in than your back stitch. Another one you might use for that and we'll be doing later is our chain stitch. So I probably should be doing it more like this so that the needle goes through like that. And actually that it helps me with, I was getting too much space in between. Is that what you're meaning? Oh.
So like I'm doing so that it's kind of angled, not a ton of angle, but you could do it a lot more if you want. And then, so where I stick it down in lines up with where it goes in for all of them. And then it's just slightly to, yeah. Finish it off with one last down in and tie it off. Now we're ready to do blanket stitch. So I'm going to hold my thread so that it comes down and around and then do that horizontal direction. Well, I guess it's vertical the way it's showing up on camera. Um, and then pull it and make sure that you're catching this thread. So it'll kind of make like an L. So I'm going to make that thread be down again. I'm going to make sure this is in line with our first stitch here, about the same distance. And this should be about the same length. And you're just going to pull that through. And this will be used a lot of times to finish off edges of fabric or a edge of a blanket. So like if you ever get those throws from the store, this is what you'll see on the edge of those blankets. And a little thing I've seen for people that are doing a lot of like the blanket ones, so like make a mark on their thumb of the distance they need it to be and then just kind of measure it that way. Now to finish this one, I can either just finish it off with a line down here, or you could finish it off by kind of just locking in that last stitch right there. I'm going to go with that to just finish off my line. And then just like before, just tying it off. So we're ready for our next one. And this one is a lot bigger. It's the feather stitch. So the picture you have isn't really the best for this one, but it was pretty much all I could find on it. You'll take and you're going to leave your thread like up and over and you're going to Decide how wide you want each of your feathers to be. You could also make it a lot more narrow than the original one I had here. And I kind of, it changes in size and shape as I'm working. You'll go however far you want over. And then you're going to take and find that middle point at the top. So you've got an angle here. And you want to make sure that thread is behind your needle and pull it through. And there is your first part of the feather. So it's kind of like the chain stitch that we will get to later. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to line it up with the bottom here that you just 
made the first half of. Try to make it about the same width and about the same height. And you want to make sure that thread is behind your needle and pull it through. And then you just repeat all the way up. Line up, find your top, pull over. Are you doing okay with this one? Now that I'm getting towards the top, I'm going to check where my border is, make sure I'm not going on the outside of it. And I think I can fit one more part of the feather in right about there. And I kind of chose a fabric, you can kind of see that border through. And stuff perfectly up to the edge. And to finish this one, you're just gonna, since you're holding this piece in place, do a small stitch that holds it in place. So you just make sure that your thread wraps around it. So the next one is cross stitch. And you can either do it like you would if you were cross stitching, which you would just do all your right um, crosses this way first and then come back and do them on the left. Or you can do it the embroidery way, which you'll actually want to start not quite where I'm at. Want to start a little more over because you actually go backward this way, like that. So you'll go there. That's one, this is two, and this is three, like in the picture. And then Three and then four, yeah. Three, four, and then five would be skipping it that way. And then you would do like the reverse of it. So taking it back to here and going down. And my crosses are gonna run into my feather because my feather kind of got out of control. So with this one, instead of like how you would do in cross stitch, just like the by itself cross stitch, your crosses are actually going to differ on which one's on top. So like the first one you do the slanting to the bottom right, it's going to be on top, while your second one you do, you're slanting to the top right, it's going to be on top. And that's just kind of kind of confusing, but 
if you want them all going the same way, you would just do it the regular cross stitch way. So I'll show that after this section of them. I'm going to try to angle it so I'm not a, into my feather as much. So if I want to do it the cross stitch way, I'm just going to go and do my slanting like this, making a vertical line with my needle. And I think this is faster this way. So I've reached the end of doing my forward slashes. And then I would just do the back slashes the same way. Okay, and I just finished mine. I kept losing the end of my string. And we're going to be doing chain stitch. So you can't really see this one too well. It's a little tight. If I had used a bigger amount of thread, it would show up a little more as the chain. That one is also pictured on the piece of paper. So this one, similar to how we did the feather stitch, you're going to make sure that your thread is here. So I'm going to flip it over because we're going to work this direction with it. So you're going to go back where you started your stitch from and then straight down from where that is, you're going to make sure that you're going over that thread and just pull it through. And then for each one, you want to try to do that same distance. And you're just going to go back to that same spot you were at. And then straight down from it. So you can actually kind of see the chain on this one because I made it a little bigger. The other one I did really tight. And to finish it off, you would just do one little stitch down in like I did on the feather stitch. I'm almost there. One more. I'm almost to Sandusky here. There we go. So do that little stitch and then tie it off. And the next one is actually basically the running stitch, but then you take a second color 
and you whip it into it. So it's the whipped running stitch. So just like before, you'll just do your running stitch. In and out, in and out, about the same distance each time. Okay, mine are definitely not about the same distance each time. And then you can pick a color that you'd like to put into it. So I'm just going to go back to the purple I had. And I'm going to start right at the bottom where we started before. But then I'm just going to, instead of sewing into the fabric, I just pick up each of the running stitches and wrap it around like that. So it's just a twisty looking result. And then when you're to the end, you just go down at the very end and tie off like before. That one's an easy one. So our next one is going to be a herringbone stitch. We're going to pop up farther away from this stitch because this is going to be the bottom here. And this part is the top, but we start on the bottom. So I'm going about here down to the bottom of my Ohio. And then this is our top. So I'm going to go horizontally here to the left. And then this is going to cross over here with a, you want to line it up with this, but you also want to make sure that you're going a decent amount over so that it kind of makes that. And then line your second one up with the one here. And this might be one that it might be helpful to mark it out. Mine weren't exactly perfect. Some of them are much wider than others. And then you just keep repeating that all the way across. And I like to kind of cross it here to give me an idea of where I'm going to aim for. So our next one is the coral stitch. And you could do it more stretched out or you can do them really close together for more of a beaded look. But what you're gonna do, and this one kind of involves holding your thread. And actually I'm gonna do one and then move over because it's really close into that edge, making it hard for you to see. doing and 
and this is actually one we're going to be working this direction on. So I'm going to take and go down into it. And it's a very small amount that you pick up of thread. Maybe this is the better angle for me to get at it. So if I move that, you can see it's a very small amount of fabric. You want to make sure your thread's going over top of it, but then your needle is going to go over this thread. So it's kind of a big loop. And that makes a knot on your stitch. And yeah, so it's going to be both. So it goes over at this point where you're taking up a little bit of fabric. And then at this point here, it's going under. So if I pull that a little tighter so you can see. So we're over in this area, but we're under here and then it pulls through. So it's basically making a knot. You've got your thread coming up out like that and it's looped around like this and and then you're going to pick up a tiny bit of the fabric you want to make sure this is over it and that you go through this loop so this should be under your needle and then get my hand out of the way we're going to just pull it then and it makes a knot. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for you. joining. Yeah. And if you need to set up any time to finish it, or if you have any questions, just contact me. Um, if you can't see it in the chat, my phone number here at the library is the library's phone number, just extension 1108. And then my email is c-b-o-l-l-e-y at defiancelibrary.org. I'm going to do the wheat one here. So with wheat, you're going to be working from like the top down. So if you want it pointing this way, you'll actually want to start at the top of your Ohio. Or if you don't mind, if it goes the other way, you can start at the bottom, which I already tied mine in at the bottom. So I'll be working it backwards. And we're just going to do an initial wheat stock. And that is done by just making a V shape first. So down in like that.
back to that stitch there and then you put your tassel on top like the top of wheat and it's going to get stitched down into the same spot right there. So I'm going to come up here. You'll go through all three of these. Or like she had mentioned, if you want to avoid picking up any of the fabric, you can do it with the back side of your needle. And that's going to make like the chain stitch of it because you're then going to go back to this spot right here. And it's made that loop like a chain. And then you're going to make your V's to get that wheat shape going. And then you'll go straight down again. Go through all of those stitches that we have up here. And create that chain again. And once again, the same, adding the kind of spikes of a wheat. And you just keep repeating that. So the zigzag is done by going, oops, we're going to do like a vertical here. And it goes back to where you first come out of your fabric. So you're making just a vertical line. And then we're going to make lines parallel to that. Like so, it'll make a first half of a X, so like that. And then you do the same thing again, so that it makes that parallel line like that. And you're going to repeat that all the way down. And then we're going to work backwards doing the reverse side. So we're going to go like this. And I'll explain the reverse side when we get there. I've reached the end of mine and it looks pretty cool this way even. So I'm gonna make sure that I finish off this last one so that we've got a vertical line there. And I'm just gonna go this direction now using those same vertical lines going over them um, twice so that you get a line on each one of them. And so you get your cross going the other direction. So now I'm going to show how to do the open chain stitch. 
It's also known as the ladder stitch. So we're going to do, it's very similar to the regular chain. And we're just going to go down into the fabric. And you kind of have two imaginary lines that are going up. You're gonna pull up diagonally. You don't want it fully tight at this point because you're gonna line up with this one right here. And then make another diagonal. So you're gonna keep doing that all the way till you reach your border. Always catching this thread behind your needle. get to the last one you want to do, you can make tiny stitches on both sides to hold it in place. So I did the one there and the one right there, just like you do when you finish the regular chain. And then tie off. The arrowhead stitch is basically a bunch of Vs. You're gonna go like this. You make your first diagonal, you make the other side diagonal, and then you're just gonna keep making Vs. So then where you want your next one, you wanna line them up. And you just tie off like usual. Now the final stitch we're going to fit in here is our double knot stitch. We get us started right here. For our double knot stitch, you're going to take and make almost a horizontal stitch. So you see we're going to pick up a little bit of fabric here. And with that, we're then going to loop our fabric around this way and go through that horizontal stitch we just made, like so. And then we're gonna loop our thread around this way and go through that same stitch this side. So that's the double knot part of it. And then we're just gonna do the same thing again, picking up a tiny bit of fabric, making that horizontal stitch, going through it on this side, and then going through it on this side. You can do them really close together or you can do them far apart. Much like the coral stitch. So here we are up close, going through that stitch. Turn around, 
can I do it on the other side? Picking up a little bit of fabric. Going through our stitch on this side. Turning your loop around this way and going through the stitch on this side. Double knotting it as you go. And so for my final one, I'm just going to go down into that and leave it without doing the rest of the stitch and tie it off. So now is the finishing part. Um, you could also start your project with making the border so that you would have something to work off of. But I'm gonna take some of the black embroidery floss. We're gonna use all six strands of this. Attach that in there. And actually, I'm going to work over my thread so that it holds it in place. And I'm just going to use this printed border that I had on the back of my fabric as a guide to where I want to stitch. And to back stitch, let me just clean that up there. So back stitching is done by going down into your fabric like that and i'm following my border i'm gonna come back up still following that border and it'll look like that then i go back to where i was here and stitch and then I'm going to meet up with that right there, pull through, and go for my next stitch. And I'm going to follow my border here. So we have this blank space, and we go back, filling in that blank space. And I'm going to come back up at the end of that row. And I'm still following my printed outline. Looking at the outline, I can decide where I'm going to go here. Come back to the stitch. And I'm going to go to the end of this. And since I already had started this border, I can finish it right there. And I'm going to tie off my thread with a knot. And here it is finished. So what you can do is you can cut that extra fabric off and you can display it with this. Um, before you cut it, make sure that you have this centered if you're gonna hang it from that. Um, and you can also, as an optional thing, you could take some hot glue and put it around the outside to make sure it stays. Another option is you could frame this or you could take and sew it onto something. So if you have any questions, you can contact me with information I have in the description. And you can also schedule the makerspace to complete this project if you need any help. Good luck. <laughs>